you know it's all good and done yeah you know what you're doing good you're doing something for the lord i'm happy yes but when was the last i mean god's happy but whatever it is when it comes down to the bottom line have you shared have you shared with someone what jesus did mm -hmm. have you told somebody that jesus died for them have you told someone that they, he 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 bled for them that he took away their sins and if you just accept him as your personal savior your life can change that you can walk into heaven have you told someone that you really really need Jesus that have you told someone that you know how you've changed have you told someone that you know where you've been and how he has come into your life and how things has changed because of Jesus have you really or have you even like you know lived a testimony have you lived have you lived a life to testify for the power of God in your lives you know you know a lot of people that you know have been healed miraculously by the power of God don't even share it like five years ten years down the road they forget about what God has done mm -hmm. why you know what I mean so the first thing is you must have the burden for the lost souls can we read Acts chapter 13 verse 47 for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Amen. For this is what the Lord commanded us. This is God's command. He says, for we are, we are the light to the Gentiles. Amen. What that means is, we are the light of this world. Right? We are, we are to bring the light of God. We are to bring the, the power of God. We have to bring the love of God to the people that don't know God. But you see, we're not doing that, are we? We like to say we go to church. We like to say we, we want to get into this choir. and we, want, we like to sing. We like to do this and we like to do that. But come on, guys. There's more to life than just living and singing. You got to really get down to the bare bones of why God called you. He has called you to be the light to the Gentiles. So one thing that you need to do is start having a burden for the lost and start doing what you need to do so you can get to the place where you you fulfill the calling of your life. Right? A lot of you know I really stress that because a lot of people like to do ministry because of the fact that they they want to be recognized. And humans, yes, yeah, we have this, we have this, this um, inequity, or we have this, this weakness in us that we want to be recognized for something that we do. No one wants to be nobody, exactly, right? And because of that, they want to be recognized. So because they're in this Christian circle of friendship, right? They get, they want to be, they want to do something, so they be recognized among the certain crowd. Just like another person in this world want to be identified with another crowd, we too, being Christian, we, we want to be recognized by the Christian community. Amen? And because of that, we become so occupied by being, trying to be uh, recognized, that we lose the actual fact of doing ministry, but we do ministry for ourselves. <laughs> Amen? And we lose the focus. So get down to the bare bones and really have a burden for the souls. Amen? Second thing, is that we need to we need to rec recognize the call first the burden then the call the call means that's where you get prepared that's where you get broken that's where you get you get molded that's where you get torn that's where you get built that's where everything all that sort of stuff happen amen and when we get into that state there are a couple of questions that you should ask yourself okay in order to find your um, your direction or upon, uh, the, the direction of your calling upon your life first thing let's just examine yourself Can we, the first thing is that every, the call is within Christ the call that you have upon yourself must and should and have to be within Christ because if it's anywhere else it's not about Jesus mm -hmm. amen can we read Ephesians we turn to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 the second part to 16. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, part B to 16. We will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. For him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Amen. As each part does his work. 
As we are being, we are, as we, the body of the church, come together as a bride, we, f we fulfill the body of Christ. We build the body of Christ, and as each part does its work, that means every call, every part, must be within Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So in order to find out, okay, which direction, which part of the body are you? Because sometimes, you know, a lot of people, they, they like to be the head, right? But they may be the feet. You know, they may be the hand, but they're working as the leg. Right? You may be a pastor and you may be cleaning the washroom. I'm not saying, you know, that's wrong. But, you know, you got to do your part. And you got to let others do their part. And people, the congregation of the church, must recognize that the minister has a position. And that we have to take that, uh, that, that uh, burden of doing all these other things so that the minister can do his part. Because the minister becomes so occupied by doing so much that he doesn't have that much time in prayer so he can come and bring forth the word. Mm -hmm. See, each of us have to do our parts. It's not the minister's fault all the time. Mm -hmm. It's a congregation most of the time. And we, f we find a similar situation happening in the first century church mm -hmm. where the apostles started serving food and they weren't doing a very good job at it. Exactly. And they had to get other people to go and do that so they can do what they were called to do exactly. properly. Exactly. And they delegated the power. Mm -hmm. And having the delegation of power among the church will only grow the church. Right. But sometimes we get so occupied by being my church, my church, my church, my church, mm -hmm. that you, 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 you don't, you're not really building a kingdom. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? We need to be able to know and delegate the parts. And know, okay, you know what, this person has this talent. Mm -hmm. You know, they should be able to do this. And you too should stand up for the passion that you have. And that's one thing. Is that First thing is that you need to you, what are you really passionate for? Or what really stirs up your spirit? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like sometimes something else may stir up your spirit, but you're doing something else. You know what I mean? And you're not in the position where you're supposed to be. And that happens because we, we tend to focus on just working for the people and not working for God. When we learn to work for God, we learn to work for the purpose He called us for. And God will open those doors when we have a burden to go to the passion or the, the, something that stirs up your heart. And next thing is, second thing is, what are you really living as? Are you living as an example? Amen? Are you really showing yourself as a living testimony before men? Amen? Yeah. As um, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, for, that's the last verse God said, He says that for us to be witnesses for, in Jerusalem, then to Samaria, then to all the parts of this world, Judea, sorry, I twist my tongue there, Judea, and to all the parts of this world. Amen? Amen. So we need, to be, we need to be a witness. We need to live a life that nobody's able to point a finger and say, what, you're a Christian? Mm -hmm. And this is what you say? And this is what you do? You know, I saw you here. Wait a minute. He's worshiping now, and I saw him there last week. He swore at that person last week. You know, and we, we bring down the name of God by not living a life that brings an exemplary to the people of this world. Amen?